The January Scarlet and Violet OU tiering survey is now out. This is where the OU council basically gets to see where the community is in terms of how we enjoy the metagame, what we think is broken. For example, in this one, they have Chiempal, Garganical, Espathra, and I believe Golden Go. And yeah, I want to hear your thoughts. So if you do have a Smogon account as well, feel free to fill out the survey down below in the description and let me know what you guys think about everything. Maybe you don't have a Smogon account or don't want to make one or don't feel like filling it out. I want to know, do you think the metagame is fun? Do you think this Pokemon is broken? Why don't you think this Pokemon is broken? Let me know down below. Leave a like and subscribe if you enjoy this content. So we're going to get right into this and I'll be giving you, this is my first time like opening it up and answering it so you guys are getting my actual answers so what is your smoke on username of course it's aim you can leave teams there as well if you want and i also want to note this is the second ou tiering survey that we've had for scarlet and violet the first one was back in december on a scale from one to ten how enjoyable do you find the current metagame i'd say a nine uh, that was my answer for last month and it's still the same we did lose chi yu and annihilate and i'm gonna be honest i miss chi yu even though it was 100 percent broken but i still miss it now, why am I enjoying the metagame and finding it fun? I think that there's still so much room for innovation. Um, I think it was interesting that the community ended up voting that Terra not to be banned, which was something that was on this list before. And that while the vote was obviously extremely close, I think that we've started to adapt more and more to it as well. I don't see a lot of complaining as much um, from Terra itself. And, and by from Terra itself, I mean people complaining about Terra, not Terra complaining that Terra is broken. That thing doesn't have a voice, but I I think this is a really good example. This is a tournament game, right? This is a tournament game that just happened. Crying uh, versus Kebab. Now, Crying, she has an insane tournament team, and this is why I think the meta game is still enjoyable and fun because innovation can even work on the quote unquote highest level of play when it comes to Smogon, which is this. This entire team is all made out of heat sets. It's and this is again, this is a tournament game. This is a tournament game. So this is Focus Ash, Bramble Gas Lead. And then I'll show you a few other things that were cool here. Um, this Sylveon is Calm Mind, Sub, Draining Kiss, Terra Water, um, allowing it to actually like beat like Iron Valiant. And the Garchomp ended up being Terra Steel, the Volcarona. We see this great Tusk set, which was Sub, Bulk Up, Taunt, Knockoff. So obviously it looks like she's just throwing together a whole bunch of, shout out to my boy, Envy sets. Um, but they're they're working they're working in this scenario and i do want to say one of the other cool things that we saw here every single set was cool right we saw a couple doubles here try to get the garchomp or the 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 iron valley in position versus volcarona and we see a destiny bond right there so debate with the destiny bond that goes down and then we see swords dance no item acrobatic scissor to deal with great toss so i mean this game in itself was obviously just enjoyable for me and I think that just really shows that there's still room for things to happen in the metagame. If you want to see my full breakdown of this, I had a stream last night where I went through every single um, Smoke on Premier League OU game uh, and I broke them down and we just watched them together. It was a really good time. So I'll link that down below as well. On scale from 1 to 10, how competitive and balanced do you find the current metagame? I'd, I'd say about 8. Am I thinking that Terra is still broken on anything? Not necessarily. Chi Yu is probably the biggest one. Same thing with Annihilate. I know that a lot of people think about Garganachi. <laughs> I had to say Garganic on the beginning because then people get mad. But at this point, we're three minutes in, so you're probably already subbed or you're just going to unsub anyway. Uh, Garganachi, people might be thinking that mon's annoying. Um, I will say that there's nothing like outright busted like Chiyu that I feel like with Terra and gets killed. Though I would say that Chiampal is semi-close, but I've always known Chiampal was really good, especially with Choice Band and Terra Dark or Terra Ice. Both are really solid. So uh, I want to say about an eight. Um, is there anything that's just straight up broken right now? Some people wanted to say before, oh, uh, Dragonite's broken. I don't remember the last time I lost to a Dragonite um, with Terra Normal. It's really freaking good. I think I think things are, a lot of things are really, really freaking good. And I love that people are starting to adapt as well uh, to what's going on. Like, uh, versus Garg, some people are starting to, uh, to run sub, slack off Skeletors. Now, personally, I do not like that set. It allows you to set up on Salt Cure and basically just start... Uh, boosting pass. I don't like that set because I think that a Skeleturge without will o -Wisp is an easy Skeleturge to face, personally. But um, I'm sure I'll get smoked by that thing on the ladder at some point. And also, the in Garg's case, obviously, there is the Covert Cloak, but um, just an item that's just straight up stops it. But there are people that are adapting to that as well, and we'll talk about that in a sec. So, this is where we find things. Um, for the following, rate how worthy of tiering action you feel these Pokemon are in the current metagame. List off. But again, please give me your thoughts on this. Even if you got to write like three comments, I don't care. 
Write them all. I don't, I don't write. It's, the, it's not like there's limited space down there. Write what the hell, what the hell you want. As long as it's not, you know, attacking my friends for no reason. On the scale from 1 to 5, how do you feel about Champel? I love that they use Eve's picture. Uh, tearing action needed would be a 5. 3 would be indicates potentially ban worthy, which would mean more than likely uh, suspect test, at least. And then one way that indicates balance. I would say that Champel, at, at the very least, deserves a suspect test, but this is what I think for the for the community. This is what I think for the community. This is what I think 100% for me. Now, this is my opinion, but I, I do think it's still better to lead towards a suspect test, and I don't think it'll get banned. I don't think it'll get banned at all. And this Pokemon has been on the slate, what, three times uh, to be potentially banned, and the, the Smoking Council, all of them vote no ban every single time. Maybe two people vote ban. Um, I will say that a lot of them didn't know the power of Choice Band Chiampao, which is kind of wild considering we're almost in February and this Pokemon's been out since November. And Choice Band Chiampao has been running up the ladder since day one. Obviously, Swords Dance as well, but literally, Choice Band Chiampao was on the ladder since day one going crazy. Um, it's incredible. Choice Band is literally my favorite set. Uh, the Swords Dance Ghost Terra sets are pretty cool too to deal with Dragonite and opposing uh, Sacred Swords from Chiampao. Obviously, the Swords Dance Terra Dark sets are good. Um, but the Adamant Life Orb, the Adamant Choice Band, the Jolly Choice Band, those are my absolute favorite sets. I like that because no matter what fat my opponent has, right, Don Dozo, if I'm Adamant Choice Band, Stealth Dark are up to a KO, uh, Terra Dark Crunch. I love that sort of thing. In terms of uh, dealing with this Pokemon, really just depends on what its set is, right? Um, I saw in the uh, Smogon Premier League, we saw a lot of Baneful Bunker Toxapex as a means of uh, checking the one scouting for damage on gm pal and also just straight up checking for um to poison it to poison it and then checking for choice ban or not right so you get the ban for more obviously this isn't the chimp in front this is just the example like we saw a lot of that happening um so uh, people are definitely starting to uh, check it out i've seen physically defensive golden go at terras as well which is interesting a lot of king gambit as well on teams but you know and, and physically defensive uh Gaganachi is also something that people are using more and more than special defensive these days. Which, I mean, makes sense. There's not a lot of special threats that you actually need in this metagame uh, that you need special defense for, right? Everything right here is all physical, right? Um, except for Amoongus. Um, Claude's physical. These guys are all physical. Dragapult can only hit you with Draco because Shadow Ball is resisted due to its purifying salt. And Draco, you just shrug it off because it's minus two. Golden Go, you don't want to take a make it rain anyway, but even if you do, you Terra into your water or whatever typing. Uh, Glamora is not a mon you're typically in on. Um, then obviously there's Volk, which is the exception with the Terra, and then Rotom, et cetera, et cetera. But you, I mean, you could Terra and, and deal with that typing as well. So uh, I want to say a three because maybe potential suspect worthy. Will it get banned? I don't think so. Does it deserve to be banned? I don't personally think so. Um, how do you feel about uh, Garganachi? Now, this is really cool because I'm also, I would say, in the middle when it comes to this Pokemon. Does it deserve a potential suspect test? Maybe. Is it broken in my opinion? I don't think so. Um, how do you deal with it? Well, for one, the Adam Covert Cloak is something that a lot of people are running. Um, there's obviously Golden Go uh, Covert Cloak is a really, really decent answer. However, the Garganachis are starting to fight back. They said, I will not be oppressed by this one item that you can run. And I will also like to say that Pokemon like Toxapex can run Cobra Cloak and still beat it via Haze and Surf. And Amoongus can run Cobra Cloak and beat it via Clear Smog, Giga Drain, Sludge Bomb, etc. depending on its Terra. Um, like, Golden Gold might be the best user of Cobra Co uh, Cloak, but it's not the only one out there. And like I said, I will say that the guards are starting to fight back because Golden Gold is the number one user of uh, Cobra Cloak. We, this, is another this is the same tournament game before, I just used it as an example. Um, the guards are starting to obviously you, you know you, you terra right here and you live hit this is sub dragonite cool to see like some cool sets on both sides sub dragonite terra water which is perfect in terra water is literally perfect in the golden gold because you already resist ghosts anyway because of your ability and then you resist make it rain so they recover here they're starting to run fizz death more as well and they're starting to run curse salt cure plus earthquake now this allows it to break through golden go this would not beat among us um and this would annoy toxapex but uh, between Haze and uh, and just like Regenerator and whatnot, I don't think it beats a 1v1. But I just wanted to show you that like there is still adapting from both sides, right? Like while Cover Cloak is starting to pick up in popularity, uh, the Gargs are starting to notice that because duh, when they're self-cured and the turn ends, 
Um, so they're starting to run Curse as well, which is interesting because Curse was something that I use and a lot of people tried to use in the beginning with Garg and then the most popular set became Salt Cure Protect because that set is really, 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 really annoying to deal with. And then after that, we're starting to see the return of Curse again. Do I think that's the best set right now? I I'm not entirely sure because um, it still doesn't deal with like Trick and everything. It doesn't deal with Covert Cloak Among Us, but it deals with one of the best Covert Cloak answers to it. So I think that's really cool. So, I mean, does it deserve a size of test? Maybe. Are, is this probably the most annoying Pokemon for people to fight? I, I, I would, I would argue, yeah. I would argue, yeah. Um, Garg is just really, really freaking good. I, I will say though that even if you don't have Covert Cloak, if you have like certain Pokemon on your team, you can stall it out of Salt Cure. I watched Mr. Jambad stall this thing out of Salt Cure and recover it several times in the video. Uh, I've done it on streams too, um, but I've, I've seen him do it on like just with his own Garg plus like a Corviknight in between them, and obviously with the limited numbers of recovers and and stuff like that and you know you knock its item stuff but maybe you deserve a suspect test sure how do you feel about golden gold it's fine man it's, it's straight up it's fine i'm sorry like it's everybody's starting to adapt to golden goat right i don't think it's as broken as it might have been before even the the with the strongest one of the stronger sets right now um which is again that covert cloak nasty plot set to deal with guard and get free setup is starting to start to lose to guard right uh, it has to be very careful because it can't spin block the, the number one most used Pokemon, which is Great Tusk. Because if it comes in a knockoff, it's on a balloon, it dies to Earthquake. However, some people are starting to run physically defensive on Golden Gold too. I love that po people are starting to adapt to what people are adapting to the counterplay. I, I love that. That's called metagame development. That's that's nice. It's nice to see innovation. I think special defense is really good. I think physical defense is really good. I think Scarf's really good. I think Nasty Plot uh, Bulky is really good. I think Nasty Plot Offensive is really good. I think Specs is still unexplored. Um, as, as And I think it's good too. I love Golden Go. I see Thunder Wave Hex as well. So, do I think it's broken right now? No. Um, is it forcing the metagame in a certain way where it still spikes offense and you can't get rid of hazards? Not, <clears throat> not what it was before. Right, excuse me. I have to clear my throat. Not what it was before, right? Like, obviously, there wasn't as, as many oppressive Pokemon as there were when we were saying, oh, Golden Go is so broken because we can't get rid of these spikes. And, Man, and I'm losing to Palafin, just smack my mic. Palafin, Chi Yu, Annihilate type things. We don't have those guys anymore. Iron Bundle, right? So obviously with spikes up, it's hard. Switch into them, but I don't think it's the, the greatest. Like, it still blocks Defog, which honestly, good, good. Corviknight is a freaking pain, and it deserves its Defog to be blocked. Shoot, and that recover loss. I love Corviknight, one of my favorite Pokemon to use ever, but it deserves it. It deserves it. Um, But I think that people are really adapting to Golden Go. Uh, I think that... Um, and that's just what happens, right? That's why I don't like tiering action super early because I feel like as a metagame starts to develop, we really start to see things that just like change. And, and then stuff that we thought was once broken is no longer broken or it's no longer as good as what it once was. Again, whole example of Garg beating Golden Gold. Now is Garg getting better and better? Cause it might've just slowed down for a bit. Yeah, it's getting, it's, it's like the top five threat in my opinion in this meta. I think Garg is literally the top five threat in this meta. Um, but yeah, I think Golden Go is completely balanced right now. I'm, I'm being completely honest. I do not think everything that's but everything can beat it. <laughs> Literally everything can beat it. And obviously with the right set, sure you can say that about anything. Oh, with the right set, Golden Go can beat its counters. That's cool. With the right set, its counters can beat the counterplay that Golden Go wants to go for. Like what? I don't think that's a great argument. I just think that in general, Golden Go isn't what it was before. Especially because the metagame isn't what it was before, right? It wasn't Shed Tail Pass with spikes and you couldn't do anything about it. That's not there anymore. Though I also want to say that Orthworm is getting a lot of usage and it's still very good. It's still good. So who knows if anything has like that. All right, Espathra. <laughs> I did a video the other day with Espathra was Flittle. And uh, the aim of the video was to get a Flittle Sweep. I just straight up Flittle Sweep. We ended up getting it. Um, and Espathra obviously swept so easily with Shed Tail, with dual screens. Uh, Espatha is really freaking good. It's very good. Um, there's a lot of Skeleturge running around, but if you don't go hard in Skeleturge, you basically lose to Espatha via Skeleturge. You have to go hard Skeleturge and immediately just start Torch Song. Otherwise, you just lose. Um, especially if it's sub, because you're not doing enough to it. But yeah, uh, it's 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 a great mod. Um, been a minute since I've lost to this thing as well. And I will say that seeing more special defensive Golden Go. Um, seeing more sub torch song skeleters running around skeleters in general uh, also this thing having the Terra I think is big 
Uh, they're not always running Terra Fairy. I've seen Terra Fire as well, and obviously Terra Fighting is a big one too to hit Chim Pal. Though I think that Terra Fairy, Dazzling Gleam, Calm Mind is the best set. We see a lot of sub Calm Mind running around as well. Like, we've seen a lot of sub. This is another tournament game. As you can see, this is just straight up Shed Tail Pass <laughs> into things. And there's a sub Skeletor Dirge, which is really good into this team. Um, and I just want to say, like, it's at full. It's able to deal with that. We get the Earthworm in. We get the Shed Tail Pass right into Roaring Moon. I'm just going to have this going. Um, and this is what I'm talking about. We've seen, we've seen Sub Combine because Sub Combine allows us to set up on guard. Now, here's the thing. Right here, Rough messed up. This Espathra should not be winning because it's leftover Skeletors. All you have to do is go... You should have went hard into Skeletor. You have to go. You literally have to go hard into Skeletor on it, so that way, in this scenario, I mean, they get swept, right? They, they basically get swept. Yeah, they basically get swept by this. You have to go hard Skeletor to get enough hits to get leftovers over to be able to. Oh, I wasn't leftovers in this one. I was thinking about another one to be able to break it. Um, instead, they on the initial stock here. Obviously, you don't break the sub. That's fine. But yeah, as you can see right here, um, this is Spothra just straight up. It's, it's still winning in tournaments, and this was fairly easy this is fairly easy for a load in to do um but again a lot of that had to do with you i think you have to go you have to literally go hard skeletons you have to go hard skeletons because you're unaware of it but store power still gets stronger and stronger so while it's weaker you can deal with it now of course when it comes to screens and things like that obviously that makes a difference too um though a lot of nasty plot bulky golden go special defensive are running around as well i i just love the fact that the ladder is starting to adapt more and more and the tournaments are starting to adapt more and more to garg and garg is adapting back and then the spot is adapting to that because in my opinion the best um the best set is whoops that's another replay we we're watching of curse guard uh, straight up winning uh the best set in my opinion is a spot are still calm mind roost um but because you know in a tournament you're gonna see garg you're gonna see some better pokemon sub calm mind is really strong uh obviously too but how do you feel about it um i i want to take a quote from Blunder real quick because I think it's very interesting. All right, so this is how Blunder feels. If I lose to it and I feel I don't deserve to lose, ban it. That's how he feels about it. And that's what makes Amon broken to him. Uh, in that tournament game, I think, again, if Skeletor had come out, it would have been able to deal with that. But I, I understand being conservative with Skeletor because you need it. To deal with basically everything but as long as you don't lose to a spother i'm sure you can you know muscle through everything else now in my personal opinion how i think about the metagame i need to have uh, i prioritize fun over anything else fun and limited bands is what i prioritize right or what i, I i'm not on the ou council at all but uh, i was like in x and y and never again since then um i prioritize fun i prioritize having a good time over it so do i think a spother is Annoying as hell? Yeah. Do I think it's broken? I, I feel like it's just too hard to get going unless your opponent, at least in that situation, if you get uh, misplays. So obviously, dual screens helps it out as well. Uh, if you're running the Ting Lu type of team or Whirlwind, you, you know, Espothar is just never doing anything. If you have a nasty plot, Golden Go with Covert Cloak. I'm just saying Covert Cloak just because that's sets our user running nasty plot. Obviously, Air Balloon does it too. But if you have a nat or heavy boots, um, you should be able to break it 1v1. But obviously, in, in the right scenario, under screens, Shed Tail Pass, sure, it's Path Threat might need some tear reaction. But I still think it's about a 2 or a 3 at the worst, right? I don't think it's as busted as it is. Um, I, and I think that there are Pokemon out there that just straight up can, you know, break it and stop from doing what it does. So I'm putting it at 2. Um, I'm putting it at 2. Maybe it is a tearing action, but whatever. That's my opinion on it. Uh, if there's anything else not mentioned that you would like to see the council look into, we value your input, so please do not hesitate to let us know here. Hmm. Let's see. Just looking at the tier. Can't wait for Greninja to come back on the 27th, by the way, guys. It's going to be nice. 27, 20, well, probably 28th on showdown, right? But I'm looking at the tier. Nothing really. I do like to say that I love that Meowskarada is starting to rise up in uses again. We saw a lot of Meowskarada tournament. Again, if you guys missed my tournament, like going over it, just I'm gonna link it down below as a stream, as a whole thing. Check it out. A lot of content. Anything else just straight up looks broken to me? No. No, I think that's it. I think that's really it. I like where the metagame is right now. I like when metagame stabilized because that opens up innovation. Right? Um, Sub Skeletor is starting to work because obviously you know that Garg is gonna be there. Uh, the curse 
guard is starting to work because we know that golden gold is going to be everywhere um but no i don't have anything uh did you make it to top 24 of the sv no johns no i didn't join that did you get the voting requirements for the SV? yes i did are you top 150 on the svou ladder i should be your, your your answer so what's your alt psychic partner it should be up there i don't know i got a couple accounts up there let's see Pace bin. Pine Coast. That guy's number one. We got we got Mr. Jam. Where's Mr. Jam at? Don Dozo, 1955. Guys, if you have not already started watching Mr. Jam at Jam at Academy, this guy hit number one multiple times. Good friend, long time friend. He's uploading all the time now. Check him out. Check him out. Uh, I could just control it. Yeah, there it is. Number 40. Yep. Okay, so we're cool. Yeah, psych partners out there. But yeah, overall, what do you guys think? Is there anything else that you think needs to be looked at? When it comes to Scarlet and Violet, let me look at the Ubers tier list as well. Let's bring down Maridon, the most broken Pokemon probably of all time. I also want to note that, and obviously this is not a reason to not ban Pokemon, because I've seen comments like this, so, but this Mon's going to get no uses in Ubers. Like that, who cares? That, that has nothing to do with, I mean, it's sad, right? Because the Mon went from everything to that. I want to note, every single Mon that's been banned this generation is good in Ubers. Every single Mon that has been banned from this generation's OU is good in ubers annihilate does the exact same thing chiyu does the exact same thing arguably worse because karidon is a better sunsetter than torkoal and can you turn in on it basically right the switches to karidon um do you turn into specs to you terra fire and just click over here uh cyclists are still good with shed tail pass houndstone is beautiful fluttermans they're they're great fluttermans is uh, damn near oppressive uh houndstone still really good on sand and tro with troy scarf it's faster than like scarf uh uh uh, Karidon and things like that. Iron Bundle tears it up in that tier 2. Palafin tears it up. So, I mean, it's cool to see that every Mon, not just the two Ubers we have, but every Mon that has been banned is still so freaking good in the Ubers tier. It's actually so cool to see. I, it makes me happy, right? Because you'll have generations, and again, this is just a, a, something that I, I, I noticed. And, you know, I want to say, let's look at Gen 7 Ubers. God, there's so many tiers. Damn, like go. Bro, all right, whatever. Let's look at Gen 8 Ubers because it's closer for me, right? There's tiers where like Mons that get banned are not very strong. Like regular Kyurem, not very strong in the Ubers tier, right? Obviously, there's there's a little more examples of Mons that are actually still good. Especially is whatever in Gen 8, right? You want to use the Caloric Shadow Rider. Though I've used them both to break for each other. But uh, yeah, that's really all I have for you guys. Um, Let me know your thoughts down below. Let me know something that's not on this list because I didn't, I didn't put anything here. I didn't put anything here on this list, but that's because at the top of my head, I can't really think of anything. Um, unless you'd like to see the council look into bring back Houndstone. <laughs> that's, that's it, bring back Houndstone. <laughs> but let me know down below. Thank you for watching. Um, also, uh, before we obviously go, I want to say that at the end of uh, this week, I'll be having my, oh, I'll show you, my Draco desk pads. They'll be out on Friday, from Friday to Monday, they'll be out. the twenty. So from the 27th to the th uh, 30th, they'll be out. The 35 inches by 16 inches um, you know, with Advanced GG. And everybody who buys, uh, there's five people get a chance to get the shiny version as well. So you'll get both. So yeah, I'm excited about that. But I just want to let you know uh, that's coming out this Friday. And that's only going to be available from Friday to Monday. Uh, thank you everyone for watching once again. And uh, yeah, that's it. Peace.